So I wanted to show you how to use this simulation to help us find the values on the unit circle. So you can see that as we move this around, you can see the relationship that this angle has with the cosine function and whichever function you actually decide to talk about. So the sine function and the tangent function. Um, but to help us figure out the angles on the unit circle and the measures, the ordered pairs, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have to, we want to select special angles. And if you want to use the labels, you can. Then it's showing you that this is talking about the x value and the y value, and then it has a radius of 1 because it's a unit circle. So if you're trying to find the all the different ordered pairs on the unit circle, you can look at either the cosine or the sine function, um, and then just kind of drag this around the unit circle. And you'll see that here when theta is in our first special angle, we can see that this angle measure is 30 degrees. And it has an x value of rad 3 over 2 and a y value of 1 half. Now it also tells us here, since we're talking about the cosine, that the value of the cosine is x over 1, or just the x value of our ordered pair, which is rad 3 over 2. Um, and so you can go through and use this to find all of the ordered pairs. So here at 45 degrees, it's rad 2 over 2, rad 2 over 2. Again, saying the cosine is just the x. If you were to look at 60 degrees, um, you could see that the sine is the y, right? So if we were looking at the sine function, and you can kind of see where 60 degrees relates on the graph of the sine function. Now what's really nice about this is once you've found all your measures in degrees, you can actually go through and look at their measures in radians. So you can just click radians and now it will give you all the radian measures for each angle. The values on the unit circle stay the same, but the radian measures will change. So you can use this to help you fill out your unit circle.